how do you assess the importance? There's been some controversy about uh, how much these technologies really did contribute to Arab Spring in Egypt and the subsequent uh, you know, uh, protests uh, in, in the Middle East afterwards. Um, you know, I, I understand you might have got a chance to look at it firsthand in, mm -hmm. in Egypt. So the degree to which technology had an impact changes depending on the context, but there's no doubt that technology had an impact, most importantly as an accelerant. Um, technology accelerates everything, again, for better or for worse. And I'll give, tell you two quick stories that I think illustrate this, one from Tunisia and one from Egypt. And I was in Egypt uh, during the revolution. Um, I spoke to a Tunisian activist actually before the, the revolution in, in, in Egypt took place, about uh, you know, two, and a half, uh, uh, two and a half weeks before I went. And I asked him this exact question, how much did technology play a role in the Jasmine Revolution? And he said, it played really not a huge role in organizing it, but shh, don't tell anyone. Otherwise, nobody will pay any attention to this tiny country in North Africa. You know, he said, the media cares about us because they think that there's this sort of technological revolution that's happening. And he said, there are certain realities that you know, when uh, Mohammed Bouazizi set himself on fire, you know, technology allowed those images of him up in flames to spread like wildfire throughout the country and really serve as a symbol. It allowed citizens to fill a gap that was left by mainstream media or where mainstream media was, was late to arrive. Um, I mean, I think at the time, MSNBC was doing a story on Martha Stewart's dog biting somebody, and CNN was interviewing a robot contestant on Jeopardy. Um, you know, that's sort of what was going on in the world. Um, and what ultimately happened was um, the population through technology was able to get information out there, tease the mainstream media in a way that the mainstream media came in and then amplified it. In the case of Egypt, it was very interesting because what technology did was it complemented what were actually you know, at its core, traditional organizing tactics. I always find it ironic that in Egypt, the two tools that were primarily used for organizing um, in Egypt were a tool that arrived in Egypt around 6, 700 AD, the mosque, um, and a tool that arrived in Egypt, you know, I guess around you know, 2006, 2007, Facebook. Hmm. Two tools that arrived at very different times in history, um, one organizing the young people, one organizing the older generations, but both actually converging. And I remember I was in, uh, in the streets of Egypt, and I asked a young person, I said, what got you into the streets? He said, I would have just watched this on Al Jazeera. And then Mubarak shut my internet down and made this my issue. Hmm. Um, I talked to another person who said, you know, what was I going to do, sit at home in my tiny house that I share a room with you know, two brothers in and sit around and play on a computer that didn't work, hmm. tap away on my phone, which also didn't work? I wanted to see what was going on. So wait, are you saying that shutting down the internet had the unintended consequence of saying, you know, well, we can't stay at home anymore because you know, uh, all our, our fun stuff at home is gone, so we'll go out in the streets and protest? I'm saying there's some anecdotes that, that I heard that, that, that you know, suggest a, a trend like that. Um, but I think, you know, if I'm being more analytical about it, uh, Mubarak tried to shut down the internet. Ben Ali tried to shut down the internet. It didn't work in either of their cases. And one could make an argument, and I think there's reasonable belief, uh, reason, to, reason to believe that uh, a lot of young people view the freedom to connect as a fundamental human right. And when the government shuts everything down and you're completely unable to communicate with your peers and get access to information and each other, you run the risk as a government of turning something into an issue for people that otherwise would have watched on the sidelines.